Well, continuing our chat now with uh, Richard Murphy about the implications that were announced in the Isle of Man about the FATCA all over Europe, well, so certainly the, the G5. But is this the end then of the Isle of Man being an offshore or, or any offshores existing then as far as the Crown Dependencies are concerned? No, it's not the end yet, of course, because this only uh, relates to a multilateral agreement with some European countries, by no means all European countries. It doesn't apply across the whole of the EU. It's only with the five major countries inside Europe. And it certainly doesn't apply with other countries outside. Well, the US has obviously got a deal, but take out the US and the five in this arrangement at the moment, and then we look at what is claimed to be the major market for the Isle of Man at the moment, which would be India, the Far East, and the Middle East, and frankly, there's no effective information exchange with those places at all. The greatest abuse resulting from the use of tax havens at the moment is not actually, almost certainly, to countries like the UK, although I'm worried about that. The greatest abuse is that which is created in developing countries, whose leakage to tax havens is enormous. It's very obvious from the marketing that is now going on from all the Crown dependencies that that's where they see their main focus as being. There is a problem there. It is going to be a continuing crisis for them that they are going to lose out to tax havens. These deals aren't being extended to those countries yet. So the market for tax haven abuse will continue, but just not with the mainstream European countries and the US at the moment. The pressure on the tax haven industry is growing, but unfortunately we have not yet got the right mindset amongst the major leaders to extend the privileges that they're demanding to the developing countries of the world where the greatest damage is caused. Do you think eventually, though, that the Isle of Man could be almost, in a sense, of bankrupt if it can't do these sort of things? And, and, and that's how the Isle of Man has obviously benefited and uh, made, played its, its, its life so far, really, hasn't it? I mean, where will you be happy to see the Isle of Man? Well, the Isle of Man has actually tried to develop other markets for its activities. Um, the Isle of Man is not the most important tax haven with regard to what I would call illicit tax evaded funds. We know that. Um, it is very clear that if we were to take a scale of 1 to 10, then Isle of Man would be 3 compared to Jersey's 9, for example. Um, Switzerland would be 10. So it is much smaller in terms of its participation in this sort of market activity than the trust-dominated business in Jersey. The Isle of Man has created alternative markets, for example, it has been specialising in trying to get access for Indian-based com uh, companies in the AIM market and the corporate field. So it has a different financial services profile, which candidly has a more sustainable future, so long as it is accepted that tax havens have a role within the corporate tax environment, which is not at present challenged by what is going on here, but which may be by the OECD model on profit shifting, which is going to be the subject of discussion really at the G20 in September rather than the G8 in June. So is the future for the Isle of Man finance sector secure? No, not by a long way. Is it desperately threatened by this particular development? No. If I was talking to somebody in Jersey, I would repeat my warning, which I made ooh, in 2005 for the first time, that its financial services industry is going to be right up against it. And frankly, Jersey does face the risk of going bust. I said that in 2005. It was denied then. It's been running deficits year after year as a result of 010. But it's perfectly obvious that the Isle of Man has been able to sustain its finances despite the VAT cuts. The welcome VAT cut from my point of view, which I know will be decidedly contentious with those listening to this program. But despite that, the Isle of Man has been able to balance its books. I don't see it going bust yet, but I do see it's going to have to make some major reforms in the way in which it does operate its financial services sector if there's to be any prospect of that surviving for oh, more than a few years. Well, our Chief Minister always put it uh, that we were always the sort of living off the crumbs off the table of the UK. We were just eating those things. And now the UK wants everything. What, a, what, what do you say, though, to what's going on in the City of London? I mean, I, I think you've got quite strong opinions about what they're up to compared with the Isle of Man. It makes us look very small, doesn't it? Well, look, in my opinion, the Isle of Man is simply a branch office of the City of London. If we have to be candid about this, 
one of the reasons why we have a problem with the UK Crown Dependencies and Overseas Territories is that they are effectively simply the mechanisms used by the city to funnel money in and out in a tax-free way. So there has to be reform in the city as well. But that's at the very core of the problem inside the UK economy. We know the UK economy has been over-dependent upon finance. We know it's been over-dependent upon the city. That's not a new phenomenon. You know, let's take this back into history. In 1066, William the Conqueror uh, conquered the U England, but he made peace with the city of London because he wanted a loan to pay for the war he had just conducted. It's as old as that is the division between the city of London and the rest of the United Kingdom. So that problem is real. It's ongoing. There has to be reform. The banking system has to be completely revamped in the UK to make it viable in the long term. We're not seeing the appropriate moves there at the moment. George Osborne has today basically called for a reintroduction of light touch regulation, which is, we, will be a disaster. I am worried about what is happening in the UK. But I do think at the moment the tidying up of the activities of the Crown dependencies and overseas territories is important, but it is only a step on the way to the fundamental reform which other countries have rightly called for from the United Kingdom.